great games, great moments on NBC. Live action, it's about scrambling and going long for Joyner. Touchdown! Touchdown! Oh, wow. McNeil takes it at the goal line. To the 10, 15, he's to the 20, the 25, breaks it to the 40. Bill Ring in his own end zone and undoubtedly will take the touchback right there. So San Francisco's Joe Montana, Notre Dame star, and in the backfield with him. And this is the greatest improvement, according to Bill Walsh, of this 49er team. Wendell Tyler and Roger Craig, the number one pick of the 49ers. Dwight Clark, he's been up among the leaders and has led the NFL in receptions. Mike Wilson, the other wide receiver. The tight end is the veteran Russ Francis. The offensive line for San Francisco will give them to you just well. Here they are. Bubba Paris on the left tackle side. Left guard is John Ayers. The center is Randy Cross. And on the right side, rookie Jesse Sapolo. And the right tackle is Keith Bonhors. First play of the game from the 20. And Wendell Tyler struggling out to the 24-yard line. Tyler, who had a couple of 1,000-yard seasons with the Los Angeles Rams. Miami's killer B defense in the 3-4 alignment. Their white uniforms today with the green and orange trim. Second down and six. Mike Wilson for the injured Ronaldo Nehemiah, although we will see the world-class hurdler. Montana over the middle. Russ Francis, a first down at the 32-yard line. Nine-yard game. Defensively, the Dolphins uh, read this way. Doug Betters, he leads the NFL with 13 sacks. On the nose, pro bowler Bob Baumhauer. And on the right side, although he has a bad knee, Kim Volkamper, San Jose State. He's returned home. Bob Brzezinski is the leading Dolphin tackler. A.J. Dewey in the middle along with Ernie Roan. And on the outside, Charles Bowser. We'll give you the back four after this play. First down. And it's Tyler for a yard to the 35-yard line. The secondary for the Dolphins, William Judson, is at the left corner. At the right side, Gerald Small with five interceptions leads Miami. And the Blackwood boys, Glenn and Lyle, are the safeties. Dick, talking to some of these 49ers, they said that very often for them this year, this first series offensively has keyed their performance for the day. If they can take the ball and move down the field, they seem to be able to settle in and have a better day, both offensively and defensively. So Montana, second down and nine. Out to Tyler, who was an excellent pass receiver, and there's a fumble with a whistle. It blown to Dan. Mike Kozlowski came up to rip the ball away from the receiver, Tyler, who's had his problems hanging on to the football, although a brilliant receiver and runner. And it's a loss back to the 30-yard line of five yards and brings up third and long for the first time facing Montana. This is the kind of situation you hate to face the Miami Dolphins. They have such a good package on long yardage. They make it awfully tough on you. They wanted to stay out of that today, and they wanted to do it with the running game. So far, not much success there. That's Francis in motion. Montana, incomplete to Russ Francis. It would not have been first down yardage anyway. Number 44, Paul Lankford. In on the coverage, six defensive backs used by the Dolphins. And the 49ers, with that loss on the pass play to Tyler, struggling on their first possession. And in to punt, Tom Oros, the former Miami Dolphin punter. Oros was a free agent pick a couple of years ago by the Dolphins, but beaten out by Reggie Roby, former Iowa star this year. Deep return, Mark Clayton. He's at the 27-yard line. Oros never had one blocked. He sends up a beauty. 
Slayton at his 30-yard line. And he returns about eight yards to the 38. So Miami Dolphins have good field position as they take the field for the first time. 40-yard punt, an eight-yard return. Here's how Miami's offense will look. Dan Marino, he has been nothing but sensational. The rookie All-American from Pittsburgh. His running backs are Tony Nathan, banged up a bit, but he will start today. Andre Franklin at fullback. Receivers for Marino, Mark, and he's lived up to his nickname, Super Duper. Nat Moore, the veteran, all-time leading receiver in Miami history. Tight end Bruce Hardy for the injured Dan Johnson will be the starter. We'll give you the offensive line after this play. No score, just underway at Candlestick. Tight end Hardy in motion. And Nat Moore at the 50-yard line, unable to come up with the ball as Carlton Williamson made a fine defensive play along with Eric Wright. The offensive line for Miami reads this way, left to right. John Giesler from Michigan. Bob Kuchenberg of Notre Dame. Dwight Stevenson of Alabama. Ed Newman of Duke. And Eric Loxo from Tulane. Second down and 10. Miami at the 38. Run more than San Francisco, and Don Shula talking about that yesterday. Of course, coaches constantly in that chess battle trying to do what the opposition doesn't expect. So Miami came out throwing on first down, and now they run on second and ten. Tony Nathan hits a block. He's at the 50, and he's at the 49er 46-yard line. A first down for the Dolphins before Williamson can make the tackle. The defense for the San Francisco 49ers did not stop uh, that 16-yard run. Lawrence Pillars at one defensive end. Pete Kugler on the nose. And Dwayne Board with seven sacks and a touchdown this year on the right side. Willie Harper, 10 years. He's the dean of the 49ers. Ricky Ellison, a rookie from USC. Jack Reynolds, hacksaw in the middle. And on the outside is Keena Turner. First down at the 46. Franklin's first carry he hugs the ball and gains nearly five down to the 41 yard line one of the strengths of the San Francisco team it's back for Ronnie Lott at one corner with Eric Wright he leads the 49ers with five interceptions one for a touchdown Carlton Williamson and Dwight Hicks he has two interceptions both of those for touchdowns this year it's one of the things that Bill Walsh talked so proudly about the fact that when his defensive backs get a hold of an interception they are such great athletes such great runners with the ball and that certainly would be borne out in their stats they have four touchdowns by interception this year Marino on second and five. Oh, what a play but unable to come up with a ball a fine effort nevertheless was Tony Nathan whose feet had slipped from beneath him and still made a gallant effort to come up with a ball at the 35 Dick this turf is is not very strong in terms of root system. You're going to see a lot of people slipping and sliding today, and had we had more moisture on this field, it might have been a real mess. The field is actually in pretty good shape, but there's not much of a root system, and therefore people will have trouble keeping their feet today. We noticed the kickers yesterday especially having difficulty. That's Nat Moore in motion out of the shotgun. Marino and he hits Moore and a first down at the 35 yard line. Carlton Williamson made the tackle six yard gain and a good throw by Marino Dan Marino continues to amaze us and as we said earlier Don Shula says maybe this young man will have a bad day but so far he has avoided it look how quickly he spots his receiver and that's one of his strengths he really can unload that ball in a hurry Don Shula 53 year old graduate of John Carroll University is son David upstairs member of the coaching staff a most unusual man some regard him as football's best taskmaster on first down Marino David Overstreet and he is piled up for a loss at the 38 Ronnie Lott from the left corner diving low and Overstreet denied a three yard loss when we talked to Bill Walsh after practice yesterday his concern was really the running game. Although he's a passing coach, he said if we can shut down their running game and if we can establish a running game, he said that that really completes our situation and we then have the advantage of being able to go ahead and beat Miami. Well, he really likes his defensive secondary and he wants the opposition to throw because he feels that they're going to get their share of intercepts. Reno curling out on second and 14. Moore left alone on the sideline. 
jumped out of bounds as he caught the ball. I think they're going to get him a reception. But he didn't get much yardage. Uh, well, wait a minute. Maybe not. Maybe they're saying he was on the line. They're bringing it all the way back, Dick. So no catch, and the ball back to the 39-yard line. Marino doing a good job of spinning outside and getting extra time, and both of the quarterbacks on the field today, fine athletes. One difference, Montana has run very effectively for yardage. Marino's running, usually just to set up the throw, as he did there, and you saw Nat Moore's feet coming down out of bounds. So that denied a possible 10 yard or more gain and it's third and 14 for Miami on their first possession. Good protection. Almost intercepted and the hit was made by Dwight Hicks. Hicks denying Mark Duper. Duper coming down deep. Joe Rose crossing. It looked like the pass may have been thrown initially to Rose, but it is a zinger downfield on target. Duper gets his hands on it, takes an instant shot, although the ball was already breaking loose. Dana McLemore, the candlestick jinx is the fact <laughs> that the 49ers have won only one game in the last two years at home. What did he say, home field disadvantage? <laughs> it is indeed. Bill Walsh is concerned about it, and he's done everything he can to break the pattern. They even worked out yesterday here, something they've not been doing. Changed hotel. Oh, my. Roby sends that one almost into the bay. Oh, he can kick it high and long. It'll be the touchback at the 20-yard line for San Francisco. 39-yard punt, but only 19-yard net. One and eight at home, while the 49ers are almost perfect on the road. Now, how do you figure? That's what makes the head coach gray. 49ers looking for an elusive win at home. From San Francisco, let's go across the country to New York. Thank you, Dick Enberg. Len Berman, NFL 83. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers will not go winless. James Wilder, 75 yards on this one. Tampa Bay knocks off Minnesota. They win their first. Back to you, Dick. All right, Len Berman. And big Russ Francis is all the way to the 44-yard line. And a first down, 24 yards on the throw from Montana. A quick look. Uh Bringing you back to the repeat of that last play. Montana faking a little run into the middle of the line. Baumhauer jumping up in front of him. But what a good job of finding the seam. Russ Francis, his second pass of the day, doing a good job of sifting down, putting the ball down for a first down. Just shy of the 45-yard line. Mike Wilson on the near side. Oops, Wendell Tyler starting one way, then going the other. This is Roger Craig, his first carry is to the 48-yard line. Number two pick, first choice of the 49ers in the last draft out of Nebraska. Well, they're certainly pleased with that young man. He's, he's a complete football player. Talking to the Miami coaches, they said he not only blocks effectively, but he runs the football effectively. He catches it effectively. He does all the things that you like a young uh, running back uh, to do. He follows Andre Franklin, a Miami fullback in the Cornhusker backfield. Second down, a long five. Play action to Tyler, and the throw to Wilson. A first down at the Miami 40-yard line. San Francisco's first invasion into Dolphin territory. 11 yards on the play. Joe Montana getting a little extra time, doing a good job of play action faking here. Faking the ball into the line to Tyler. Takes a quick step back, and Wilson, who'd run an excellent pattern to the outside, will take a strike right there. Now, that's the kind of play that the 49ers love to run on you, but that only works if you can keep your running game going. And Craig going in motion. Montana drills it complete to Wilson, and the former Washington State star has the ball near another first down. Nine or ten yards on that catch. We're going to see a lot of Mike Wilson today. The reason for that is that the Dolphins have such great respect for Dwight Clark. They're going to have two people on him all day, and you're going to see a lot of catches by number 85, Wilson. On second down in less than a yard, Dwight Clark comes out. Eason Ramson, a second tight end, is in for the 49ers. Tyler, he's got blockers. 
first down at the 29-yard line. A good job by Brzezinski to take out the interference. Jetson came up from his corner to trip up the runner. Roger Craig, man we're talking about, threw a nice block for Tyler. First down, San Francisco at the 29. Dick Bob Brzezinski has led this team in tackles in three out of the last four weeks, and that has been especially important because of the many injuries that these Dolphins have had in their defensive linebacking department. Dewey is just getting back into the lineup, as is Roan, and they have leaned heavily on Brzezinski in the last couple of weeks, as well as Bowser. Tyler. Flags down as Tyler slams the 20-yard line. Charles Bowser made the tackle along with Glenn Blackwood. Oh, well, they indicate holding against San Francisco. Yeah, we'll hold you just for a second while we go to New York and an NFL 83 report from Lynn Berman. Against the 49ers makes it first and 20 for Montana. Wide open, Wendell Tyler, was he inbounds? No. He did not get both feet in. And Tyler was left all alone along the sidelines. Bill Walsh saying, I thought he had both feet down on the sideline. He's got to get both feet down inbounds. Montana throwing a beautiful strike on this play. A planned rollout to give him a little extra time. You see the cut by Tyler right there. A perfect pass. Now watch Tyler's feet. Catches it. He's got one foot in. The other foot was in the air. And that's not good discipline. If Tyler drops that other foot, he's got to pass inbounds and a big first down. That little toe dance the good receivers do. He had a chance, but... The momentum carried him out of bounds. Montana, five for seven passing. Good protection. White Clark is going to go all the way for a touchdown. Seventh time this year, Montana to Clark for six. The interesting thing about that pass is that Dwight Clark is absolutely covered on the play. He's double covered, in fact, by one of the Blackwoods, Glenn Blackwood and Gerald Small. Now watch the throw anyway, which goes right between the two defenders, and it was actually Blackwood who knocked Small off. I think if he hadn't hit him, he may have been able to at least make the tackle. Ray Worshing the extra point and it's seven to nothing San Francisco Joe Montana has such confidence in Dwight Clark that he'll throw the ball even when he has two defenders on it right here good pattern looking inside and the ball is beautifully thrown watch the shot right there that took him off the back of the receiver made it impossible for him to make the tackle seven for San Francisco led the NFL with 60 catches that was his 47th this year and his seventh for a touchdown. Capping an 80-yard drive in just seven plays, Wershing will kick it off to Fulton Walker. Walker coming up to his five-yard line. Dangerous return, man. And he's down at the 34-yard line. Early action in the National Football League today. Let's check the finals. The Pittsburgh Steelers now 8-2 with a win over San Diego. New England leading Buffalo in the fourth quarter, 21-7. Dallas gave Philadelphia a 10-0 head start, but then beat the Eagles 27-20. The Raiders falling behind a couple of times in the second half now have the lead 21-20 in the fourth quarter at Kansas City. Dan Marino, just 22 years of age, in his fifth start. Trailing 7-0 ball at the Dolphin 34. So about four yards. Sell out crowd of 60,000. Entertained with an early 49er touchdown. They're trying to get a win at home, a rarity for San Francisco. I'd like to welcome those of you who have seen Cincinnati's ever improving Bengals. They're back on the right track with a 55 14 win against the Houston Oilers. Oilers 0 and 10. Tampa Bay off the Schneid with a win, upset win at Minnesota. Houston now the only team in search of a first win in 83. Here at 7-0 San Francisco, and Tony Nathan from Marino is out of bounds with a first down in front of Bill Walsh, the 49er coach, at the 47-yard line, a nine-yard play. Lott and Turner made the tackle. Tony Nathan, the kind of big play back that Shula has 
needed in this backfield. He catches the ball well and, of course, runs exceedingly well outside. Nathan out there by himself. The blitz was coming to the inside. 58, Keena Turner out there to, to put the clamps on him, finally put him out of bounds. Nathan coming into this game, the leading Dolphin receiver with 33 catches. And Johnson's minded injury is in the ball game. That's Johnson lined up at tight end left. Nathan on first down, stopped just shy of the 50-yard line. A gain of about three. It'll be second down and seven. 49ers lead here in the first quarter with four minutes remaining in the period. The first place in the West. Second and seven for Miami. Marino. Oh, nice fake by Marino. And then out of bounds quickly at the San Francisco 42-yard line with a first down. Merlin, that fake was so effective when he threw his arm forward. There were three 49ers in the defense that jumped in the air. Well, you watch a young quarterback, and you find out very quickly whether he wants to run with the football or whether he would rather pass it. Marino has illustrated early that although he can run, he usually runs just to set up the pass. Now, you're absolutely right. That's 58 from <laughs> Willie Harper there, or Keita Turner, and Ronnie Lott, both frozen by the fake. They didn't believe he was going to run it. He did. He picked up a nice first down. Marino from Pittsburgh. Fired at number 13 with the Panthers, a la Tony Dorsett and Hugh Green, two All-Americans who preceded him at tip. Incomplete, but a terrific throw against his body. Matt Moore, he motioned Moore to come back and hit him right in the numbers, and it went through Moore's fingertips and off his chest. Williamson on the coverage, but the ball was there. Other scores? Baltimore takes the early lead against the Jets in the first quarter. Late game here on NBC. And Seattle and Denver playing up in the Kingdom. The Seahawks lead 3-0 against the Broncos. And that's the final now. The Raiders beat Kansas City 28-20. The Chiefs have played a lot of close games. John Makovic has that young ball club tuning up. Second and ten, Miami trailing seven nothing. Three and a half minutes left in the first quarter here in San Francisco. Oh, Mark Clayton on a little reverse. And Clayton, the rookie from Louisville, is inside the 35-yard line. He'll be short of the first down. Mark Clayton, an exciting young runner as well as a receiver. He's got a chance to watch a little bit of blocking going on on the outside. Duper becomes a blocker on this play. Now he's lining up on one on one on Dwight Hicks. Hicks is doing a little rodeo act. A little bulldogging out in the middle of the field there. Well, Duper got his man, I guess. Yeah, well, I guess he did. Uh, Hicks definitely didn't get part of the tackle, did he? 32-yard line, and it's third and one for Miami. Foster into the tight end here. Franklin running into his blocker, and it's going to be close on the measurement for a first down. Eric Wright came up from the corner. Ricky Ellison, rookie linebacker in on the stop. One of the interesting things about these two teams, Dick, that when you talk about the Dolphins, most coaches will tell you that Shula really loves to finesse. He really loves to finesse. You see them moving around. They want to get you by position, and then they want to beat you on top of that. But they want to get you in a bad position first. You saw Roy Foster, who's the extra tight end. He's a lineman normally, moving over to the right, changing positions and trying to make it possible for them to run against the weakness of the 49er defense against those big people. Well, let's see whether you'll have to finesse or make a finesse call on fourth and short or whether it's a first That's down. Short. Well, will Shula Gamble or go for a long field goal run? Well, it's, that's a long, long field goal, and Uwe von Schaman is only two for his last six. He's not kicking it well. I think they'll go for it. Well, the decision made, Miami will go. We welcome those of you who have seen the Raiders defeat Kansas City 28 to 20. Miami Dolphins here at Candlestick Park trail San Francisco late in the first quarter. 7-0, a 39-yard touchdown throw Montana to Dwight Clark. And here's a critical call for Miami at the 32 of San Francisco. It's fourth and inches. And Marino and the Dolphins go for it. And Marino easily sneaking behind his right guard, Ed Newman. The strongest of the offensive blockers in front of the rookie quarterback, and that's a lot of yardage for a sneak. First down, Miami at the 29 of the 49ers.
We welcome those who have seen Green Bay defeat the Cleveland Browns 35 to 21. Dick Kenberg with Merlin Olsen. A minute and 42 seconds remain in the first quarter here at Candlestick Park on a beautiful football day in this marvelous city. The Miami Dolphins trying to drive to a tying touchdown have just made good on a fourth and inches situation. Marino on the sneak, and it's a first down at the 29. Nathan getting outside for good yardage. Stepped out of bounds at the 24 of San Francisco after a gain of five. When Don Shula has his offense running on full and all the cylinders working, and certainly one of the important cylinders, number 22, Tony Nathan, he is a tough man to put a defense against. He uses those tools so well. With Marino, who can throw it, he's got deep speed with Duper. He's got power up the middle. And, of course, he's got Nathan outside. Well, that's good news for Miami Dolphin fans. New England beating Buffalo 21-7. The Bills were tied with Miami at the start of today's play, so a victory by Miami would give them sole possession of first place in that tight AFC Eastern race. Second and five. Going for six, wide open is Nat Thor, touchdown. The veteran Moore almost led too far. Marino kissed as he threw the ball, and he hits his veteran receiver, a 24-yard score. Marino continues to amaze, and Nat Moore, who's really become more of a control receiver, found some openings on the right-hand side and breaks away from number 42, Ronnie Lott. Marino looking almost all the way at Moore on that play, away briefly, but watch this great catch by Moore, right off the fingertips, controlled it, the, the official right on top of him, keeping an eye on him to make sure he did indeed have control of that football. That sign is for the San Francisco fans saying, hey, you can't win at home. They've won only one game in the last two years here, so they're trying to pretend that they're not at home and want their team to be thinking they're on the road in the Orange Bowl. Well, Uva Von Shaman ties it up with the extra point. Oh, was Nat Moore open, and it's a seven-all time. Just how open was Nat Moore? Putting a little move right there. Lot expecting him short. He tried to chuck him and missed the chuck. Boy, you can't afford to let a speedster like Moore lose like that. His fourth touchdown catch of the year. The game is even. Here, thrown for touchdowns, 24 yards on Marino to Moore. After 39-yard pass, Montana to his favorite target, Dwight Clark. Dana McLemore, one yard deep. Young man from Southern California who played at Hawaii is out to the 25, and a flag is down against the 49ers. One would suspect back at the 15-yard line. Mark Brown made the tackle for Miami. McLemore almost breaking away on that one. There is the call against the 49ers. March it back. Tough enough to start on your 20. Now you're going to start way back behind that. Well, since a lot of folks have joined us uh, this the second half of our NBC football doubleheader, Merlin, let's bring them up to date on some of the key things to watch here. One of those is the fact that San Francisco has won only one game while losing eight at home while they've been eight and one on the road. A most unusual statistic. Illegal block above the waist. Number 54 of the receiving team. First down. Ron Ferrari ticketed there. Not only uh, have they not played well at home, but Walsh has begun to get really concerned about it. Ignored it at first. In preparation of this one, he made some real changes in this uh, in their ritual this week prior to the game. We'll get into those. Two teams, six and three, both battling to stay on top. The Golden Gate City of San Francisco, and it's a beautiful day. San Francisco, after the penalty starts from inside its 10-yard line. Montana to Wendell Tyler. Boy, they're going after the ball, and a flag is down as Taylor is tacked. Tyler is tackled at the nine-yard line. Charles Bowser made the hit. Well, let's go back to the San Francisco having trouble winning at home in two years. Merlin, what changes have Bill Walsh made? Well, Bill Walsh did a couple of quick things. He had the team practice here yesterday. It's the first time since Dick Nolan was the coach that they practiced the day before the game in, in the stadium here. He also changed the time to late in the afternoon. Thought that maybe number 80, offense. Penalty is declined. It's second down. Easton Ramson takes the call. But he also got the team here late in the afternoon, thought that maybe some of the guys needed to concentrate more on football than getting out to sign autographs or doing whatever they were doing. The other thing he did, which was kind of interesting, is to change hotels. They only crossed the street, but they went from one hotel to another. Now it's 7 all. Final seconds of the first quarter. Montana to Eason Ramson, the man who was penalized on that last play, and he's out of bounds at the 14-yard line, short of the first down. 
Bob Brzezinski from Ohio State made the tackle. Miami has been the most successful AFC team in interconference play. Look at that record. 34 wins in 42 games against the NFC. Shula's team really supporting the American Conference. And they're 3-0 against the 49ers in their brief rivalry. Of course, uh, Shula has some pretty good marks against a lot of teams in the NFL, AFC or NFC. And about eight teams that have never beaten Miami. Roger Craig, the rookie from Nebraska, looking for the first down. He bumped out of bounds at about the 17. That won't be enough. William Judson really doing a good job of getting a push on him to, to send him out of bounds. Good job by the inside of that Miami defense, stringing out the, the offensive play to the sideline. Washington leading St. Louis early 7-0. Judson, who made that last tackle, was a mathematical and statistical wizard. Well, he knew just where the yardsticks were. That was a quick count and denied Craig. It's fourth and one. We saw him take three of them away from the Jets here a few weeks ago. That's Mark Clayton. He's replaced Tommy Vigorito as the punt returner for Miami. Tom Oros, a former Dolphin, the punter. Ooh, Eddie Hill was in close. Clayton... Still on his feet. Flags are down. 45-50. Clayton is to the San Francisco 42-yard line, but I believe they'll you lose some of that yardage on a penalty. But a great effort by Clayton under a wave of 49er jerseys. Well, Mark Duper has been getting the rave reviews, but Don Shula yesterday said, we got another Mark on this team who has some great talent, too. And he was referring, of course, to Mark Clayton. Illegal use of the hand, so that fine effort by Clayton will be called back. Miami, traditionally the least penalized team in the National Football League. We asked Don Shula about that. He said, you know, I'm, I teach it that way, and I'm very proud of the fact. I want to play within the rules. Some people have accused me of getting the breaks because I've been on various committees. But Miami, again, right there, fewest penalties, although they were hit hard last week, and they're hit with a 10-yarder now. Illegal use of hand. The other thing that Don Shula said that was interesting to me, he said, I go back and talk to those players. If those 49ers are tied at seven, final minute, first quarter at Candlestick Park, San Francisco. First down, Miami, at its 37. Andra Franklin. And that was one of the priorities of Merlin Olsen, of Bill Walsh, stopped the run. And on that occasion, Franklin picks up only one yard. Let's go to NFL 83 was concerned about was the running game and he is not doing well in that department they have not rushed the ball well and they are allowing Miami to rush it very well in this first quarter second down and nine as we open the second quarter 39 yard line of Miami a quick hitter to Bruce Hardy and he has a first down at the San Francisco 45 yard line Ricky Ellison number 50 made to tackle 16 yards on the play he was Ricky Gray at USC has changed his name we won't see Dan Johnson, who's been the number one tight end. We will see a lot of Hardy and Rose today at tight end, and you don't lose much when you put Hardy and Rose in there. Hardy doing a good job of finding the opening, and that's just a, a quick little dump-off pass to the tight end that was very effective on that last play. Matt Moore with a touchdown catch, 24 yards to the right. Mark Duper, who has been brilliant the last four games, along with Dan Marino, is split left. Franklin inside handoff for a couple of yards to the 43. A second down and eight. Lawrence Pillars and Ricky Ellison made the tackle. The 49ers uh, use some interesting defensive schemes. They're really a pressure defense. They do a lot of blitzing. They do a lot of shifting around. They'll, you never know where they're going to be. Bob Kuchenberg, left guard for Miami, said before the day is over, I will have played against almost every one of those defensive linemen. And he said, that's, that's tough. He said, you never know where they're going to go. And you don't. Plus, you can't... Uh, School on their tendencies. Because you don't know what their techniques are, Dick, and that, that does make it awkward for an offensive lineman who was trained in the old school as Kuchin was. Second down and eight. Blitz. Right open is Hardy again, and he has a first down inside the 49 or 30. So back to back throws to Hardy, 14 yards on that one. Marino again able to read that blitz, getting a good performance out of his offensive line and back, giving him a little time to find Hardy. But Shula said this young man is amazing. He reads the defenses. He is so aware and so accurate. And there it is right there, beating Jack Reynolds, number 64, who'd come across behind him. But good play, and they're moving the ball again. 
Well, that was a classic example of what Shula was talking about, recognizing the opening man, open man and snapping that throw. He got it there in a hurry. First down at the 30. Seven-all tie, early second quarter. Nathan picking his way to the 25-yard line. Didn't appear there was anything there, and Nathan squirms for four. He had a play similar to that last week. Uh, the ball game, he went into the line, no room there, did a 180-degree turn, came back outside and ran for an 18-yard touchdown. Boy, that's a startling uh, indication of how good Marino has been for Don Shula. 13 more points per game since Marino took over at quarterback. And he's getting good performance out of some other people in the process, among them Nathan. Is one of the reasons why Marino's been successful. The only interception was a last play of the first half, one of those rear back and throw as far as you can, hope you get something. And that was intercepted. Woody Bennett is close to a first down at the San Francisco 20. Bennett. Bennett's first carry, Miami of Florida. And how about that Miami team of Howard Schnellenberger as they're looking toward a possible invitation to the Orange Bowl and maybe a shot at Nebraska. Schnellenberger, we remember well, as a part of Shula's staff and uh, part of the Rams staff. Good, good football coach. Done a good job with those hurricanes. Yes, that's a game you'll see on NBC. Third down and a yard. Franklin. He stacked up right at the 20 yard line. Matters where that. And marks the progress. That's the bull elephant backfield. Franklin and Woody Bennett, two very big hammering backs. 49ers doing some of their own hammering on. There they are. A couple of real horses. Franklin going in behind Bennett on this play. Needs to get comfortably over the line. You'll have a chance to watch it. Good, good hit by Ricky Ellison there coming up from the inside. And Shula will go on fourth down again. Made one earlier. They're now six of seven in fourth down situations. That's those part bad numbers. Well, he went for fourth and inches on his way to the touchdown, a 24-yard Marino to Moore throw. And from the 20, he turns down what would be a field goal of less than 40 yards. So it's offside. Nathan driving through, but the 49ers jumped offside where they pulled across that neutral zone. And we'll have to let the officials sort that one out. I think a, a good job by Moreno staggering his count and getting the 49er defense so eager to get penetration that they jumped on the voice sound and not on the movement of the ball. So five yards against the 49ers will give Miami the first down at the 15. I talked to Bob Greasy once about Shula and his play calling abilities. And Greasy, of course, had great respect for his they former coach. 64 defense first down but absolutely uh, what stuck in my mind was what Greasy said about uh, Shuley said when everything is working right when he has the running game going when he has deep receivers and control receivers he is an absolute master at controlling the game and even got the first down by penalty this is the eighth play of the drive Miami trying to break a seven all tie four minutes into the second quarter from the 15 quickie to more the ball but out of bounds and even there Miami picks up an extra yard or two to the 11 yard line it'll be second and six Dwight Hicks over to make the stop that more I think very comfortable in his new role if you saw him he still doesn't uh, exclusively work as a control receiver but he has great quickness still and has has rebounded as a very important part of this offense. Remember last year, Don Miami told us he didn't think he'd be back this year. He thought his career was really coming to an end as a Dolphin, but he certainly is back. Just changed his role a little bit. Second and six. And that's Franklin bowling up the middle. And a good defensive play by the 49ers. They're claiming a fumble, and Jack Reynolds has yeah. the football. They've yeah. got it. Comes up with a rutabaga. Miami brought Bruce Hardy in motion on that last play to trap on the inside. They ran the big back up in behind him, but Jack Reynolds just slipped up in there. A couple of good pops, and they took the ball away from the Miami defense. Perhaps we can see it on the inside now. Good stack. Hicks in there, board in there. 
trail. Lots of bodies. And there's Reynolds pulling that ball away. Somebody just popped it loose. San Francisco stopping Miami, taking over at the nine-yard line. And Montana going to go for a long one. Now has to dump it off to Craig. And the rookie from Nebraska stopped at the 17-yard line. That was designed for something deeper. They were looking for Wendell Tyler deep down the middle, but he was well covered. Talking to the San Francisco coaching staff, Dick, they have so much respect for Bill Arnsparger, for Shula, for this defensive team, that it's difficult, they said, to try and attack a weakness on this defensive team. What you almost have to do is attack their strength, which is their ability to react. You try to show them something and get them to react and then take advantage of that reaction. Second down and three. Craig again. Ooh, almost fumble that toss. He has a first down out of the 22-yard line. Good speed, 4-6 speed for this 222-pounder. We mentioned the importance of the running game to Bill Walsh in last week's ball game. They only had 85 yards rushing and a very disappointing rushing effort against the New York Jets. And of that 85 yards, 50 of it by Montana. Tyler, for example, nine, eight yards and nine carries, less than a yard a carry. They need to have better numbers than that so that they have the alternatives clearly in the mind of the defense. If they can shut you down and say you've got to throw the football, well, they can make it tough on you. From the 23, play action, Montana. Get rid of it to Craig. Nope. They had whistled it dead. They're saying that betters, not betters, but number Dewey. 77, A.J. Dewey, would come yeah. in. That is the grasp of Montana, and the whistle had blown the play dead. And look who's back from an injured groin, a pulled groin that's kept him out of action. You saw betters driving inside, and Craig was the man who was trying to stop Dewey. No chance, and clearly he was in the grasp of the linebacker. Montana doing a good job of getting it away, but that rule is designed to protect the quarterbacks, and this is the case where it hurts the offensive team. And it hurts the 49ers as the sack takes it back to the 13-yard line, second and 20. Craig. Ooh, as he hit at the 18-yard line as Doug Betters trailing the play hammered him hard. Brzezinski was there as well. And at the 18-yard line, it'll be third down and 15 for San Francisco. Dick, a good defensive team is a hustling team. And when you see a Doug Betters rushing the passer first and then coming all the way downfield to get in on a tackle, you know he's hustling. And it's one of the reasons he's having such an effective year and one of the reasons that this Miami defense is so tough to play against. 13 sacks for betters, and he just followed that running, or actually that little swing pass very well. Short yardage. Eight minutes left in the second quarter. Good protection for Montana. Mike Wilson at the 45, the 40, the 37 yard line. third catch of the game and a big one for San Francisco 44 yards Montana with some concern for his offensive line the starting center Fred Quillen has been replaced by the starting guard Randy Cross they've got a, a rookie Jesse uh, Sapolo in there so he had to do a little rolling to get some time rolled out found the open man and that's classic uh, 49er offense both Clark and Wilson to the left with Wilson in the slot. Fake to Tyler. And going for it all. Earl Cooper with the running back, a fullback out of Rice, and such an outstanding receiver. But uh, 83 balls back in 1980 was number one in the NFC. And Cooper now wearing a wide receiver or tight end number, 89. You heard Aurora, which sounded like a boo. They're saying Coop, Coop. He's a popular, popular man here, and of course, Walsh trying to take advantage of his speed. He's got four or five speed. He backs up not only the tight or the wide receivers, but also the uh, tight ends and the running backs. Yeah, with Cooper playing mostly uh, as a receiver, 49ers have really only four running backs, so Cooper has to double up. Second and ten from the Miami 37. Tyler, oh.
expression, quick opener, and Tyler was through like a shot. Good blocking by John Ayers and Russ Francis on that last play, but Tyler is one of the most explosive backs in all of football. Look at him here, and that's, look at the hole he has. They anticipated the play to go to the other side of the line. Tyler saw the opening inside, and a good back gets to that opening. 19 yards and a first down at the 18. Tyler again. And he's inside the 15-yard line. Bill Walsh talked about Tyler and the importance that he has in their scheme. He said since he dislocated his arm, dislocated his shoulder, he has not been able to come back and run effectively. That's the kind of, of explosiveness and the kind of uh, role that they want him to play in this offense. He was doing it until he was hurt. And now it appears he's ready to do it again. Gets a hand as he jogs off. Ball at the 14-yard line as Walsh studying his game plan. Has only the one running back, Roger Craig. And it's Craig, a little misdirection. He's inside the 10 to the 9. That'll be close to a first down. But that's the kind of a play that I indicated that the 49ers will try to use. They'll try to cause the defense to react, get a quick reaction from them, and then go back against the green was effective there they get down to a third and short situation and Tyler goes back into the ball game John Sandusky Bill Ernstbarger that's the defensive mind right there you see him giving the signal for the defense pretty obvious what they'll do here they're coming with all the big fours third and one 49ers like to throw to Tyler in the flat in this situation but they stay with Craig on the ground and he has a touchdown back at the 49er nine-yard line and it's capped off on a 10-yard rumble by Roger Craig. You see Bill Arnsparger asking A.J. Dewey what happened on that play. The Miami defense obviously suckered out on it. The extra point is good by Ray Worsing and San Francisco owns the lead 14-7. You look at it right there. They were able to get into the secondary, and Lyle Blackwood, the man who had a shot at him, but he did not have a very good shot. Put your helmet on and look out. He's coming right into your lap. Oh, he may get there instantly. Fourth touchdown for the rookie this year running, and it's 14 to 7. Bring up a long 91-yard march, and Craig 10 yards on the run, and with less than five minutes left in this first half, San Francisco has 14. Wershing's number, 14 to 7. Wershing's kick is short. Fulton Walker at the five. Oh, he's got a hole. 30, and he's out across the 35-yard line before Dan Buns can make the tackle. Bill Ring also in on the play, 32-yard return. Timeout with four minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the first half. Montana and San Francisco with a 15 to 7. Eric Loxo, the right tackle for Miami, has been injured, and Cleveland Green has replaced him, number 74. Marino and a short gainer out to the 40 yard line. Matt Moore, Ronnie Lott on the coverage, number 42. Quickly updating the late scores. Four other games late today. Baltimore leading the Jets 3 0 in the second quarter. The Rams and Bears are scoreless in the second. Seattle leads Denver 6 3 in the second. And it's 14 0 Washington over St. Louis. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is South Florida 7, WSVN, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Dick Enberg, Merlin Olsen in San Francisco, where the 49ers lead the Dolphins 14 7, a battle of first place teams. This is a second and seven play, and Nathan pulled down after a one yard gain. Tenacious defense from number 74, Fred Dean. Dean more renowned as a pass rusher than for his ability to play the run, actually coming outside expecting a pass. Gets hung up by Cleveland Green 74, but by virtue of his position and his speed, gets outside, gets a good piece of the tackle, gets him down on the ground, going to be third and seven. Dean, who leads the 49ers again this year in sacks with nine. 
And he's looking for a chance here as Marino works out of the shotgun. Third and seven. Wide open. That's Joe Rose. And Rose, who played across the bay at California, has a first down at the San Francisco 41-yard line. 19 Rose, an yards. Excellent receiver. Keena Turner, number 58, actually fell on the ground, made it possible for Rose to be that open on that play. Well, Pittsburgh gains revenge. San Diego, you'll recall, knocked them out of the playoffs last year. New England again beats Buffalo. Dallas fell behind. Once again, they rally to win. Best record in football. The Raiders, 28 and 20. They had to come from behind late. Green Bay beat Cleveland, 35-21. It was New Orleans winning. They're putting pressure on San Francisco. Cincinnati big against Houston. The Oilers still looking for that first win. Tampa Bay, its initial victory at Minnesota. Baltimore, 3-0 against the Jets in the second quarter. Rams and Bears are scoreless. Denver trailing at Seattle, 6-3. And 14-0, the Redskins leading St. Louis in the second quarter. Timeout has been called by the Miami Dolphins. Two minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the first half. 14-7, Niners. Well, that's the, one of the many charms of this great city of San Francisco. The cable cars, of course, are not in operation now. Total renovation. But uh, the men who drive those cars, uh, they learn to play the bells. In fact, there's a contest every year. The most musical of those who can play the bells. On the sidelines, rooting on the 49ers today. Miami trailing 14 to 7. A first down at the San Francisco 41. Marino looking for something big. Now in trouble. And down he goes back at the 49 yard line. Dwayne Ford and Fred Dean, two outstanding pass rushers, put the clamps on Marino. Marino has really had an outstanding record of not being sacked has been getting great protection from his offensive line but this San Francisco defense has 33 sacks on the year now 34 they're able to get a lot of bodies through there and he almost got away from board but just in fact he did get away from board before Dean put the clamps on him but you get that many people back there it's tough to get away and credit Pete Kugler the nose guard he was the first man to flush Marino out of the pocket Second and 21, screen to Woody Bennett. Almost fumbled as he gets to the 49-yard line. Keena Turner and Ronnie Lott put quite a hit on the ball carrier, Bennett. The third and long. And that's the two-minute warning. Good four man, four defensive linemen down. Out of the shotgun. No. Gunning it to Rose. What a throw by Marino on a first down at the 24-yard line. You can't throw the ball any better than that. Well, Dan Marino has one of the strong arms in the NFL, and without that kind of strength, there's no way he'll complete that pass. We're going to watch Rose quickly, and then we'll get back to the action because they're ready to snap the ball. And there they ball are. Right on the money. 25 yards. Back to Rose again, and he's inside the 20-yard line. A gain of five. As Marino going without a huddle, 122 left in the half. You remember that Marino called the timeout a few moments ago. They may wish they hadn't as they try to go in a hurry up offense and beat the clock. 115 and counting down. Clayton to the left, Cooper to the right. Down the middle, touchdown, Matt Moore. He's two for two. Find the open receiver. Get him the ball. What a great pass. White Hicks and Carlton Williams and or Car Carlton Williams and the men who are defending on that play, but great protection here. You'll see Dean come in from the left side of your screen, and Marino just ducks to the side and gets away from him. That's the kind of movement a good quarterback has to have. And look at that strike. Saw the open man, and within just a fraction of a second, that ball was on its way and a perfect strike. That's that's the kind of thing that has earned Marino such great respect from not only his own coach, but other coaches around the league. He has the strength and size to break away from Dean. Smaller quarterbacks might have gone down there, then it spots the open man. It wasn't a perfect spiral, but the ball was there so quickly, and Moore has his second touchdown. 19 yards on the throw. Uva Von Schaman trying to tie it up for Miami. He's got it. And it's San Francisco's turn. Joe Montana has all three timeouts and he'll have 64 seconds to work with when we return. Intercepted only four times. He and Montana, both in the column, throwing the football today. It's 14-all as Von Schaman will kick it off. 
kind of fits. He, he says himself, he said, I'm still learning. And indeed he is. But the one thing that he did on that last play, which is so positive, is that he was reading the field. He was seeing all of his receivers, and when a receiver was open, he got him the football just that quickly. And Merlin, I've not seen a stronger arm in the NFL since Terry Bradshaw arrived. I don't think I have either, Dick. Von Schaumann with Ring and McLemore deep coming to Ring at the goal line. And down at the 15-yard line as Vince Teflin, number 88, and Jim Jensen, number 11, made the play on the special team for Miami. 59 seconds for Montana and the 49ers. Randy Cross, a pro bowler at guard, hasn't played center since 1979. He's playing center today with the injury to Fred Quillen and Jesse Sapolo, 11th round draft pick. Number 61 has moved to right guard. They really like Sapolo. From the 15. Incomplete as Bowser put the heat on Montana. Sapolo is matched up on that particular play against Doug Betters as the Dolphins go to their four-man line, move Betters into left tackle, and Sapolo one-on-one with Betters, holding him down momentarily, and since that was a little screen pass to the outside, turns him loose as he is supposed to do. And Bowser almost undressing Montana as he ripped at him from the blindside blitz. The object is to let him in there, but not quite that fast. Montana 10 for 14. Offside. Out to the 25-yard line. Complete to Dwight Clark. Yeah, we've like that penalty, I believe. A.J. Dewey, I think, uh, who'd gone down to a three-point stance on that play, had jumped off sides, but I think the penalty would be five. They'll pick up almost 10 if they take the play. Montana asking Bill Walsh what he wants. The third down. Third and one. Or second well, and they're gonna, five. They're going to give back, give back the four yards. Oh, what are they doing? <laughs> they're going to mark off the five, make it second and five. Okay. Don Chula prancing along the sidelines. David Chula upstairs. We had an interesting shot of the two of them in the pregame warm-ups. He's trimmed down pretty good. Uh, Chula is proud of the fact that he's got himself in pretty good shape, and indeed he does. There they are. Look at Dave Shula. Hey, why not the same pose? <laughs> they both have <laughs> that uh, typical uh, posture of Father Don, Grandfather Don, David presenting him with his first grandchild. Better so. And Craig has needed at the 19-yard line. And the clock is running 39 seconds. And now clock stopped with a San Francisco timeout. 38 seconds left in the half. On that particular play, uh, Betters again locked up with Jesse Sapolo. Here you see him right in the middle of your picture, number 75. And this is the little draw play. Betters had made an inside pass move, ran himself right into the play, and Roger Craig had no chance whatsoever. Betters almost undressing him as he took him to the ground. A loss of a yard to bring up third and third and six. Craig. And he has the first down across Bumble. the 25, but he fumbles and. I believe they said he was on the ground. Yep. And so Miami, thinking they had the football, will not have it. It'll be a first down for San Francisco. They immediately call time with 29 seconds left in the half. Check another score for you. The Redskins, 17-0 against the Cardinals at home. Well, in the two divisional races involving these teams, Don Shula's Dolphins, we're tied with Buffalo at the start today. Buffalo has lost to New England, so Miami has a chance to own the top spot all by itself. Although New England back in the picture at five and five. The Rams on the board first against the Bears in the second quarter. Papa would, Bears. Oh, Papa Bear. Yeah. What a what a sad thing and yet an inevitable thing. And he's been ill and but what a grand memory he leaves for all of us. And Dick, I know you had a chance to sit and talk to him and wonderful whip. My son, Nathan, had a chance to meet him at the Hall of Fame banquet back in 1980. And he put his arm around him and, and took his took his uh, program and signed it and wrote a nice little note to him. And I'm just, I'm really tickled that uh, there's that kind of memory for, for my 10-year-old uh, who was fortunate enough to meet the, uh, the great Papa Bear. The patriarch of the National Football League has left everyone with some remarkable memories. On first down, Montana. Great effort again by Betters, trailing the play for 6'7 and 260. He can move. He moves very well. 
Very consistent player. That play, he'd been held out of the play. Did not get a good pass rush, but when Montana elected to run, Betters found himself in the right spot. In fact, you talk to him about his sacks during the year, and as we said, he is the NFL sack leader. He does not take a lot of... He goes long for Clark. He was out oh. of bounds. No catch. Out of bounds. Gives us a chance. You know, my favorite George Hallis story, as we chatted with him a couple of hours, uh, two, three years ago, was the story involved when he first started the National Football League. They signed Red Grange. They barnstormed huge crowds. Grange was such a an important sports figure back in the mid 20s they finally found themselves in Washington DC and were visiting the president Calvin Coolidge at the White House and Coolidge who apparently was not much of a football fan of course it was a whole new uh, concept and idea when he was introduced to George Hallis and the Chicago Bears he thought he was meeting a circus act he thought <laughs> Hallis and the Bears were something they were coming with tight wire and, and balls that they're going to balance on their nose Yard line of first down, the clock running. That'll probably be the last play of the half. Three seconds, two, and that'll do it. Of course, totally yardage. And the passing department, Marino was only one for five in his first five passes, so he's come on strong later in the in the uh, first half here. And that one big turnover you talked about, Dick, uh, a very well played first half. So kicking off will be Ray Worshing. He'll be kicking right to left. Uh, one of those rare days at Candlestick where the wind is not a factor. The late uh, setting sun will be for a team moving right to left on your screen. A receiver looking back toward the quarterback on the far sidelines will be looking directly into the sun. Worshing gets it started in the second half. Bolton Walker at the one. 15 20. 25 and tripped up at the 27 yard line Dana McLemore and he's still running but there was a whistle 25 yard return <laughs> Ron Ferrari running him down from behind let's uh, reintroduce the principals the starting lineup Stan Marino the rookie quarterback with Tony Nathan and Andre Franklin in the backfield for the Dolphins the wide receivers Mark super duper and on the other side, the veteran Matt Moore, two touchdown catches in the first half. Bruce Hardy for the injured Dan Johnson at tight end. John Giesler, Bob Kuchenberg, Dwight Stevenson. Right guard is Ed Newman. And Cleveland Brown will be in at uh, right tackle for Eric Loxo. Loxo injured a knee in the first half. Cleveland Green, I'm sorry, at his tackle position. <laughs> Johnson we see is starting a tight end open the second half but green indeed number 74 is at right tackle for Loxo Franklin the only running back and indeed perhaps they spotted something off that left side and they run behind Geisler good yardage defensively in the red jersey San Francisco side Lawrence Pillars starting at defensive left end with Pete Kugler on the nose and Dwayne Board, an outstanding player. Willie Harper, the veteran linebacker, inside the rookie Ellison, along with Hacksaw Reynolds, who recovered that key fumble. Keena Turner, the other outside backer. And the defensive backs are Lott and right at the corners, Williamson and Hicks at safety. Second down and three. Franklin starting wide, then diving up the middle to the 46, and that's going to be close to a first down. Three of these four defensive backs coming into the league as rookies in the Super Bowl year. Lot right from Missouri, Lot from USC, Williamson from Pittsburgh. They were all rookies the same year. And Dwight Hicks, he's the old man in the group, but he's a fifth year back from Michigan. And the three leading tacklers for the San Francisco defense in the first half, Williamson, Wright, and Lott. And that's the way it's been going all year. Yes, in fact, uh, if you look at this tackling statistics for the 49ers, Lott, their leading tackler coming into the game with 64, followed by, by Wright with uh, 45, and Eric Hicks with 44. And uh, you just, you don't get that, that amount of tackling from uh, most secondaries. These are aggressive secondary people, but still, I don't know that that's such a great stat. That means you're getting a lot of ball carriers into the secondary, a lot of receivers into the secondary, and that has, that's a positive and negative stat at the same time, Dick. 
just short of the first down on the measurement as you saw so with inches to go third down Miami Shula coming out and this first series of downs so important for a team to establish their tempo for the second half Shula coming right out to establish the running game make come back here and well I think you'll go for the first down I don't think you'll go for the big one here three tight ends in there going wide to Nathan Close to breaking for a long run for Nathan. A first down at the 48. Eric Wright, number 21, from the corner, made the tackle for San Francisco. Wright, the leading interceptor with five this year in that San Francisco secondary. Tony Nathan exploding on that play, and that was not the kind of play you would necessarily expect. Shula crossing up the 49er defense, who expected that play to come up inside. Nathan doing a good job of getting outside and finding some room. Carlton Williamson had blitz to the outside, had a chance to make the tackle, but Nathan eluded him. From the San Francisco 48. Air ball, air ball. Play action by Marino. Got a man open, Moore again, and the veteran is inside the 20-yard line to the 19. Oh, my. Bob Horn, the linebacker, coming back to help Ronnie Lott, and Moore, with two touchdown catches in the first half, gets 30 on that play. And that Moore enjoying himself thoroughly today. Just a little delay pattern. Trying to get by the linebacker. Does so effectively. Finds room there. Bob Horn coming back from the inside. But what they're exploiting there is the amount of room between the linebackers and the deep dropping of those defensive backs. And when you have some speed receivers in the game and you can send a duper deep, you force those defensive backs deep and you can take advantage of those short zones. Miami trying to break the 14 all tie on the first possession of the second half. From the 19, a little delay to Nathan, and that didn't work. Thanks to Lawrence Pillars in his eighth year from Alcorn State. Pillars reacting very well to that play, and he's the kind of player that, that is very steady for these 49ers. Not as spectacular a rusher, perhaps, as Board, but plays the run extremely well and is a very good pass rusher as well. Meanwhile, Dan Marino. Will he be the first quarterback since Bob Waterfield in 1945, a rookie quarterback to lead a team into the playoffs? As you see other late game scores, Seattle's still in front. I've got a trivia question. I'll get you in a minute with it, Dick. Okay. Second down and nine at the 18. Looking for more again. And oh. he's open. Oh. Matt Moore was wide open, had beaten Ronnie Lott. Ronnie Lott's got to be shaking his head down there. He's uh, He's been on the short end of a couple of those one-on-one -on -one battles with Nat Moore in the end zone today. Certainly had that ball been delivered. You've got to give Marino under a great deal of pressure. Let's see what Nat did to get free. Oh, great move. Just took him inside, got him turned. Marino had to throw the ball a little bit before he wanted to, and he had to guess where Moore was going to be. Not able to get in the ball. Pass rush saved a touchdown. It's third and nine from the 18. That's more in motion. They go the other way, and it's incomplete to Clayton. Richard Blackmore on the coverage. And again, Marino throwing under pressure. Jeff Stover on top of him, along with Fred Dean. To Uwe Von Schaman, who was eight for 14 this year, but has missed six of his last eight and did not really kick that well in practice yesterday. We'll try a relatively short field goal attempt. It'll be about 35 yards. In defense of Von Chama, two of those misses, Dick, were from 50 or beyond. So he has, he has been an excellent kicker, but it's just not hitting the ball well. In fact, you could hear it that some of the players saying, if you listen to it, he's just not getting his full foot on the ball. Don Strzok to hold. Oh, I think he got that one. Down the middle, and Miami has taken the lead with three minutes and 45 seconds gone in the third quarter. Uva Von Schaum. Bill Ring and Dana McLemore are deep, and it Whoa. won't matter because he's going to kick that right out of the end zone. That's five yards out of the end zone. That makes that about a 75, 80-yard kick in the air. Other scores, the Jets have taken a 7-3 lead against the Colts in the third quarter. Rams lead 14-0 against the Bears. Mike Ditka not able to use the emotion of the Palace week. 
for the Bears, apparently. Seattle 20 to 3 against Denver up in the Kingdom in the third yes, quarter. Really. Washington winning 24 0. How about those Seahawks? How about those Hawks? Chuck Knox on for coach of the year. Meanwhile, the Super Bowl champs of two years ago, the 49ers have it. And Roger Craig stacked up. Short yardage. Running over at the right side of that Miami defense. Kim Bocamper has come out of the lineup. He's been nursing a sore knee. Mike Charles, a rookie who is uh, one of the biggest rookies we've seen in a long time, listed officially at uh, 280 pounds, but Shula said he got him in a ball, uh, got him on a surprise weigh in the other day, and he came in at 297. Said two days later they weighed him again. He weighed 280. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, yeah. a lot of money in your trousers or something. <laughs> On second down and eight. Montana with Baumhauer in pursuit, and Montana ducks out of bounds with a first down at the 30 and a half. Dick, we talked about the looseness of the turf. Charlie Bowser had blitzed in from his right linebacking position, and he saw Montana start to move as if he wanted to come out, tried to plant his feet, went right on his back. You'll see Bowser here. Watch him as he tries to set his feet. Feet go right out from underneath him. And what a quick reaction for Montana. Knows now that there is no contain and simply gets outside, runs away from Bob Baumhauer, steps out of bounds just like he's marking it with his foot. First down. And didn't pass on that one. He's run the ball uh, at times this year and has over 170 yards on the season. First down play. Roger Craig hit Beautiful immediately. Play. By 71, big Mike Charles from Syracuse, the number two draft pick. They're all waiting for Charles to get a sack. He does not have his first pro sack. He apparently does a levitation celebration, he calls it, where he actually has the quarterback that he sacked raise up off the ground. Even Shula says, I can't wait for that one. <laughs> I can't either. Kim Bocamper has gone in. They, they actually would prefer to have Bocamper in. He's a better pass rusher than Charles. Charles, of course, uh, on two strong knees and with that size, able to play the run very effectively. Well, it's really closer to second and ten. There was no gain on that last play. Montana. Drilling it to Francis, who has it out to the 48-yard line, but a flag is down back where Montana threw the ball. Russ Francis has not been as big a factor in the offensive plans of the 49ers as everyone expected it to be. Uh, certainly not so last year and in the early going this year, uh, not catching nearly as many passes you would expect him to. 16 passes on the season, but he has been a factor here in this ballgame. Illegal block against the 49ers, and that will deny a 17-yard gain. Bill Walsh, 51-year-old head man of the 49ers. Those are the ones at the 15-yard line, second and 15. the first down at midfield. Jeff Moore just into the game from Jackson State, and it's a 34-yard play before Brissette that Bill Walsh didn't have a play for this particular down. Splits the zone. Mike Kozlowski, number 40, the man who's got to pick up Jeff Moore, and Moore able to find the opening in that zone defense, able to get a good shot right there from Montana, but watch the, Mon the shot that Montana takes from Doug Betters, number 75, just as he unleashes that football, Betters is all over him, but what a pretty strike. At the 50-yard line, and they send Craig up the middle for about three yards. The score, Miami 17, San Francisco 14, with eight minutes and 40 seconds left in the third quarter here in San Francisco. Tyler for the 45, where it'll be third down and a little less than five for San Francisco. Dick, this is the situation you mentioned a few moments ago with a team driving toward the far end of the field the sun coming in over the top, and you're going to be blinded looking back at that quarterback on a good 50% of that field. That means that Montana is probably going to have to throw to the ball to his left. Be a little difficult. You see, you see how the sun is dropping now behind the stadium. It's just like a glaring spotlight out into the far corner of that field. And you can see the angle left by those uprights, those power supports. Third and less than five, and there's the Better. first sack, and Betters gets him. Make that the second sack of the day, and Betters 14th of the season. He was the leader at the start. Bo Camper also there to get a piece of that sack, but it was Betters, and I think we've still got Montana on the field. Montana's not up yet. Oh, and what a lot. 
Clayton back inside the Miami 20. Whoa, that was very close. Rodell Thomas was in on top of him. The ball kicks out of bounds at the 23-yard line. So that's where Miami will put it in play when we return. Appears that Montana's Andre Franklin behind a good block. And he's all the way to the 40-yard line. A gain of about 17 for Andre Franklin. Andre Franklin injured both of his shoulders earlier in the year. And talking to him yesterday, this is the first game he's played since that time without having to tape his shoulders. And I think that's it's showing in the way he's attacking the defense today. What a big bull he is getting downfield and getting a big first down for this Miami defense or Miami offense who have proven in this second half that they can move the ball as well on the ground as they can in the air. Woody Bennett comes in with Tony Nathan now behind Marino. First down at the Miami 40. 17-14 Dolphins lead third quarter. Look at that. Is it good? They still have not signaled. I believe that's going to be good. a good catch. I think it's well when when the ball is bouncing your way. No, no, the no, official there on back. the sidelines never gave the signal, but apparently they're going to call it incomplete. Well, that's just like handing that ball back up. Good job by Marino. He's getting good protection from that offensive line. Such an important part of the passing game. Now he throws a bit of a dangerous pass here. Three 49ers have a shot at it. And it's locked. It bounces it up. <laughs> Moore gets his hands on it. Oh, Ooh. Ooh, look Boy, I'll tell you, that's awfully that close to the line. An official standing right there. Now, the fact that he did not signal may have indicated he didn't see that one. Yeah, you don't expect that kind of play. You're looking for a lot of things. Not that one. That one's incomplete. And one of the few times that Marino has really missed his man. That's back-to-back -back throws that were not good by Marino. Bruce Thigh is the report on Joe Montana, not the knee. And That's he good may news. be back. You see him with a little ice tape to it right now to, to limit the swelling, which is the big problem with an injury of that kind later on, at least in the healing process. He is not moving very crisply on the sideline, and I don't think they would take a chance with him if there was a danger of, of additional injury. But he is a tough football player. And he's a good athlete as well as, as well as being a good quarterback. Third and ten for Marino out of the shotgun at the 40. Over the middle to Joe Rose. And he's caught by Keena Turner. Turner from Purdue. And that's far short of the first down. Far short of the first down and maybe not a great play, but still a great read from Marino. An all-out blitz by the 49ers. He was still able to get that ball out, get it on target, get it to Rose. And Rose was able to get a few yards with it. Picked up by Merlin and had it not been for Turner's solid tackle and Rose had room upfield but Turner denied and on fourth and five finally get to see Reggie Roby sixth round draft pick and he can really root them high yesterday Six, just about to the top of the stadium today as we were watching him McLemore back at the San Francisco bad 17 snap. and a bad kick off the side of the foot and the 49ers are going to benefit that's going to come way out as they mark it 30 35, 33-yard line as Roby, after the bad snap, that broke his concentration, and he scuffed one. And for the short punt by Roby, Wendell Tyler, he's met rudely as Blackwood comes up to support Charles' initial hit after a short game. 17-14 the score. For those of you who did not hear it, and I'm sure NFL 83 has been on top of it, Mark Wilson of the Los Angeles Raiders, a broken bone in his shoulder is the report that we have received here in the press level in San Francisco, and that's why Jim Plunkett finished the game today in Kansas City, the Raiders eventually winning 28-20. Here in the action, Montana back in the game, and obviously that's not a serious problem for him, that bump to the leg, there were his numbers, impressive. Second and six, Tyler again to the 41-yard line, that'll be short of the first down by a couple. And again, Bill Walsh, as he promised, he wants to establish his running game. Wants to run the football, and, and obviously a game this close where both teams have demonstrated the ability to run the football and throw it. Really a, a close battle between these two offensive coordinators and head coaches. Shula, of course, calling the plays, as is Bill Walsh. And I've got to tell you, I, I admire the way both of these men handle their teams and handle their offensive calls in particular. Four minutes left in the third quarter. That's Jeff Moore in motion. And they throw to Moore. 
And yeah, there's a case where he was looking at the ball, and he was looking at the sidelines, and was also looking into the sun. That was the angle. Seven alertly came in from a wing to fair catch that ball at the 31-yard line. Right, right play by Kozlowski. Had that ball hit the ground, could have kicked off for long. Enough. Not today. What a beautiful day for football. And Marino. Oh, through the wrong man, Ronnie Lott. Mark Duper had gone downfield. There was no one there except Lott, and Marino threw him a pretty good pass. Lott with a diving try couldn't come up with it. That would have been a touchdown the other way. That's got to be a pure out and out mistake by the the two, or at least at least a miss of, of communication between the two. No question, Marino expected to break to the outside, and Duper reading the defense headed downfield, and Marino hung it out there, and Lot still shaking his head because he didn't get it. He's fortunate to have extricated himself from that problem. Woody Bennett. The big pullback able to turn the corner to the 38-yard line. It'll be short of the first down, bringing up third down. Three and a half minutes remaining third quarter. Miami with sole possession with a win today after Buffalo was beaten. This is third down and two. Incomplete to Hardy at the 40-yard line. And, oh, the 49ers get a roughing penalty, and that'll carry a first down. Number 50, Ricky Ellison. And one thing you will not be allowed to do in this kind of game is go after the head and the helmet. They felt that Ellison, although the ball had not been controlled, in fact, rolling on the ground, had taken a shot at the head of Bruce Hardy, and they'll mark it off effectively. Yeah, the 49ers had stopped Miami and would have forced the punt except for that penalty. And that's the kind of play that will just, I'll tell you, the 49er coaching staff will review that one in depth on Monday. George Seifert, the defensive coordinator, will spend some time talking to young Ricky Ellison and explaining you don't make that kind of dumb mistake, especially when you've stopped the offensive team and stopped the drive. Personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct number 50, defense, first down. Here it is again. You judge for yourself. Hardy unable to make the catch, and Ellison comes in to make sure that he's down, even though the pass is incomplete. There's no chance on the play. It's going to be over. In fact, it is over. The ball is on the ground, and there's the roll right there. But in, in fairness to Ellison, he may not have seen the ball from that angle. He's coming from behind the play. Fans, of course, don't like it. Marino going for six, and there's Moore open again. That is the fourth time that Moore has been wide open, twice for touchdowns and twice for Marino has just missed, and a flag is down. Now looked like Big John Geisler in a battle with Fred Dean on the outside, and a little holding going on there. Let's see if that's the one they ticket. Penalties working themselves out. Don Shula obviously will spend some time with his troops talking about penalties, too. But quickly, Shula getting the next play in, sent in by tight end Bruce Hardy. Hardy dislocated a little finger not too long ago, put it back in place himself, and now he's in, back at uh, work. He's from Arizona State. 57, offense, touchdown. The center, Dwight Stevenson, called for the foul. Ball back to the 44-yard line, where it's first and 20 for Marino. times they have swept to the right today. He's out to the 48-yard line, a gain of only about four yards. Carlson Williamson and Dwayne Board made the tackle. Eric Loxo, as we reported, injured earlier in the game in the first half. Dick, one of the things that uh, has hurt this Miami offense, they lost their, their backup center, Mark Dennard. And Dennard, one of his chief responsibilities was snapping on the shotgun uh, formation. Now they've had to enlist Dwight Stevenson to staff in that formation, and they're not quite as likely to do it because Dwight has not snapped that much out of the shotgun.
We've indicated that Marino really does not want to run that football. He wants to, he's willing to run, and he's able to run, but he still wants to throw it. He gets a chance here to throw to his favorite receiver, Mark Duper. Duper getting time. He's wide open early. Marino did not have time to get it away. Finally gets the ball off, and Lott has used his speed to cover the distance behind and shut it down. But watch how quick he is to get away there. Good, strong running, and boy, that's a rifle release. Just quick, bing, and it's gone. Duper had gone off the field, and no one replaced him. Here comes Clayton on very late. The clock is already at six seconds. The will have to take a timeout. Time yep. Or He's it would have been a five-yard penalty. Third down and 15 at its 48-yard line. Marino in a shotgun. Incomplete to Mark Clayton at the 35. So Marino a bit unlucky in that sequence. He had two good throws, and Clayton and Duper unable to come up with the ball against a tough pass defense. It was Eric Wright on the coverage that time. Dan Marino trots off the field, and we heard that John Elway back in the game getting a chance to, to get some playing time. And, of course, Elway drafted by the Colts, but, of course, ended up in Denver. And those are the quarterbacks drafted ahead of Dan Marino. But it's Marino who's getting the rave reviews at this point in the season and has earned them. And when you see how talented he is, it's hard to believe that so many could have overlooked him. Roby, he That's hits this better. one. And it's a fair catch. McLemore at the 17-yard line of San Francisco. Stacey Holt tonight on NBC. Wendell Tyler. 33 yards for Tyler. One of the interesting things about good running backs is that they often make big plays out of apparent little plays. Tyler getting a good block by Craig and a good block by Francis. Explodes downfield. Now, looks like he's going to get stopped right there by Lyle Blackwood, Glenn Blackwood, and Lyle in tandem, but just kept his feet moving and kept going. Gets all the way down to the 50-yard line. Gerald Small finally made the tackle. This is Craig. He breaks some tackles. They can't get him down. Roger Craig. yards on the play and Dick you said it earlier in our conversation with Bill Walsh you ask him what the biggest improvement in this team is he starts with this young man but also mentions the running game and of course with Tyler back and healthy the two of them in tandem add a great deal to the offensive punch well they're both over 400 yards that's a good one two punch and look at Craig's desire nine yards second down and one at the Miami 41 Craig again. And how is that, Berlin? That for most of the game, a team will be stopped running the football, and then suddenly everything seems to work. One of the things, one of the things that you really get out of a, a bright offensive coaching staff is the ability to find the weaknesses in a defense. One of the things that they are doing right in that situation is taking advantage of Mike Charles. Charles playing at that defensive end position it does not have that much experience. And you see that the change has been made now by Arnt Sparker. He puts Bo Camper back into the game. They went right at the rookie on that play. And these are the final seconds of the third quarter. The, the football in the second half have a first down at the 34 pass this time. And it's caught by Easton Ramson and a gain of four. Ramson, the backup tight end, tackled by Lyle Blackwood. Let's look at the three-quarter statistics. First quarter stats were dominated by Miami, evened up at the half. And here in the third quarter, the yardage going even further in favor of the 49ers as they've stretched it out now to 320 yards, total offense against 281 for the Dolphins. Time of possession still slightly in favor of the Dolphins, but right now it's, it's the 49ers who are getting the big plays, Dick. And they appear to be the fresher team as we start this fourth quarter. Second and six, Craig. He's running like they gave him a new body here in the second half. Gains four more before the hit by Brzezinski. The San Francisco 49ers coaches described this defense as a finesse defense. They said that they really don't want to have to battle you one-on-one. -on -one. They want to take away what you're doing by position. And if you can get them into one-on-one -on -one battles, we're going to get some yardage and we're going to make the big plays. 
At the same time, one of the problems that the 49er offense has had is punching the ball in from inside the 20. They've had difficulty doing that during the last four weeks. Third and one. Craig. Breaking tackle, and he has a first down as both Blackwoods had a shot at him, and he refused to go down. Glenn Blackwood had him in the backfield. They both hit him, and it looked like there was no way that he was going to get away. Takes a shot right there from Glenn, and a second shot from Lyle, and absolutely refuses to go down. They were lucky to get him, get him off his feet with a big first down. That's, that's a tremendous play. Uh, he has 66 yards. Not Blackwood, but Craig, and Tyler has 75. So again, it's tough to defense. Both these men running effectively. It's Craig's turn to the 18-yard line. Stretching forward, Ernest Roan and Bob Brzezinski collaborated on the tackle. Brzezinski doing a good job of getting upfield, getting off his man, and then peeling in behind to pull down Craig. But Craig, on a play that didn't seem to go anywhere, still managed to make, it back, make about three yards, Dick. And let's see if, if that 49er problem holds here again. And Bill Walsh said it very succinctly. He said offensive, offensive teams are having more trouble because defenses are playing a lot of zone defense down inside the 20, and we are going to have to run the ball more inside the 20. Let's see if they do it. Trailing by a field goal, Montana going for six. No, Mike Wilson hadn't quite turned to look for the ball. William Judson on the coverage, number 49 for Miami. That'll bring up third down and seven. Montana, he has really been remarkably accurate. His career percentage over 63 percent starting this year he's 65.5 percent this year but he's a plus 30 touchdown interception and really that's that's one of the most important numbers for a quarterback when he can put that many touchdowns on the board and not turn the ball over to a defense anymore than Montana has those are impressive numbers looking for Wilson and he's hit as Bowser again almost every pass play Bowser from that linebacker position comes in on a dog or a blitz and on fourth down and seven in comes Ray Wershing the no look field goal kicker refuses to look at the uprights it's Montana he said the reason that all started he has such bad vision he said I couldn't see the uprights anyway when I looked at any field goal of distance they were too far away from my vision so now that I have uh, the soft contacts they work but I I've established a habit I just don't look and he only has missed one field goal all year that hasn't been blocked that last week a 46 yarder this is 36 and it is good. Well, he finally looks, but not until he's kicked the ball and winning at home. And uh, today it's Baltimore trying to move into contention in the AFC East. Beautiful Great. kick by Wershing. Walker going to oh. gamble. He's in trouble but breaks out of there and does get it past the 20 to the 22 yard line. That's a quite an effort by Fulton Walker a 28 yard return. Let's bring you right up to date on all the scores today. Pittsburgh won easily against San Diego. It was New England beating Buffalo for the second time. The Patriots in the thick of the race now Dallas spotted Philadelphia 10 nothing lead one again nine and one Raiders was much closer than that score into Gates 28 20. Cleveland lost to Green Bay 35 21 New Orleans a big win for them against Atlanta Cincinnati pounded Houston 17 12 Tampa Bay's first win of the year comes at Minnesota Fans still booing about the call a good time ago give us to Franklin nothing there except red jerseys Ellison and Turner making the tackle late action today in the NFL. Baltimore now leading the Jets 17 to 7. The Rams have a 14 point lead against the Bears at Anaheim. Seattle at home has an eight point lead against Denver. Denver without the starting quarterback to Berg and Washington apparently will win again against St. Louis. So Pittsburgh eight and two Dallas nine and one and Washington trying to become the second eight and two team this year. Miami and San Francisco started the day at six three. Marino and 
And will they allow the catch? Yes. yes. To Duper, he was knocked out of bounds by the tackle at the 37-yard line. That'll be a first down, a 15-yard throw. Nice pickup, and again, Marino able to use his strength to get that ball over there. And look how the concentration. Duper knows he's going to take the shot, tucks the ball away, showing excellent discipline. Got both feet down in bounds before he was driven out, and that's a big play. Look for a moment like the enthusiasm that had carried the 49er offense down the field of that field goal was going to carry over on the defense. Now the Miami Dolphins have something going. From the 37, a 17 all tie. 11 and a half minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Franklin Ellison trailing the play, but the man who made the hit was Ronnie Lott, the former All-American in Southern California, one of the best athletes in the NFL. This man, a hitter. His nine career inter interceptions prior to this year, four of them for touchdowns. He has two interceptions this season. And an excellent block out there by Bob Kuchenberg, number 67. After 14 years, he's still getting out in front of those plays. Threw an excellent block for Franklin. A gain of nearly five. Second down. Appeared to be a good call. Hicks and Lott trying to stop the hello goodbye speed of Mark Duper. Again, interesting that Marino unafraid to throw the ball, even though Duper was apparently covered early. The ball slightly underthrown, and I believe what happened was that Dwight Hicks in coming over cleared on top of the receiver just before the ball arrived and bumped his arm. The official right on the scene did not call it. The official trailing inside did see it and did call it 44 yard penalty let's see if we can spot it from here it is indeed Hicks and you see him coming from the inside and Lott as well diving in tapped him just before the ball arrived it appeared that Ronnie Lott might have gotten the arm of Duper and now a flag goes down again well I think they're just trying to give it back to the official oh. all right <laughs> here you need this all right, the ball is inside the 15-yard line. Miami and the 49ers tied at 17 with 10 minutes and 44 seconds. You may not be able to hear the signal, Dick. Franklin. And he's inside the 10-yard line to the 9 before Ellison and Williamson can make the tackle. And again, gets only a couple submarining well on the play was Williamson, who came up from his safety spot, Carlton Williamson from the University of Pittsburgh, native of Atlanta. Dick, this is an area of the field where it's very important that you have defensive backs who are willing to tackle. Your offense or your defensive linemen really are committed to stopping the shots right up the middle, and you've got to have those good, hard-hitting defensive backs who will come up and stop those backs when they break to the outside. That's what the 49ers have done effectively on that particular play and, and really for out, for, throughout the last few seasons. Third and a long two outside the six. They go with three tight ends. Roy Foster being the third as a blocker. And the defense of the 49ers stacks him up at the five, short of the first down. Ellison on top, but Ronnie Lott was down low. And here comes Von Schaumann to try the field goal that would give Miami the lead. But already a moral victory for that San Francisco defense. The 49ers characterized as a gambling defense. They're not afraid to come after you. And they do, in fact, get hit for some big plays because of it. But very often, they're able to make the big plays. In fact, they have set up or scored roughly a third of the points for the 49ers this year. Von Schaumann hit 35-yard field goal earlier. This is 28 yards. I think that's 23 yards. the lead. Boy, that ball had a wicked hook on it. It's a good thing it wasn't from outside the 40-yard line. Von Schaumann. Three. Tyler. Bumble. Vaughn horse 71 came up with it for San Francisco. If it's rolled a fumble, the 49ers gain five yards on Tyler's miscue. Yes, it was rolled a fumble. Ooh. That's been the knock on Wendell Tyler over the past season. That he'll make the big plays for you, but he will also tend to get careless with that football and Tyler has been quoted a couple of times as saying all the great backs fumble but 
I'll tell you, when you're down on that field and you're working hard to earn some yardage, you resent a back not feeling badly when that ball rolls loose. Now, Keith Fawnhorse was his best friend on that one because he fell on it at second and one. Montana chased by betters. And out of bounds at the 29-yard line. That'll be a first down. Back to Wendell Tyler. The last six seasons in 60 regular season games, Tyler has fumbled 37 times. 27 of those were lost. That's too much. Well, if you look back over the last two seasons, he's He's got some positives to show for oh, that. Oh, yes. How about 30 touchdowns? 30 TDs, and that's the most for any running back in the league. So I, it does tend to balance out, but I'll tell you, that's one of the things that they really work with Tyler here on because those fumbles will absolutely kill you. Clark to the left. He has a touchdown catch. Wilson to the right. First down. Good play, play action. action. Going for Clark. Oh, he's out of bounds. He tried to get both feet in that little stutter step, but couldn't do it. He only has one catch, and that was the touchdown, 34-yard touchdown that started the scoring today. Well, I think the 49ers anticipated that Dwight Clark would be double-covered all day long, and indeed, they have paid special attention to him on the defensive side today. Even the pass that he got the touchdown on, there were two defenders on him. So they have had to go to other receivers, Mike Wilson in particular, as well as the tight end. Interestingly, Walsh yesterday was talking about how a game suddenly dictates well. Plenty of scoring done in Anaheim. Rams lead by a touchdown against the Bears. Get back to Walsh in his comment yesterday. Second and ten. Tyler. Ooh, met hard at the 32-33 yard line. He said that sometimes as much as you don't want to, you get yourself into a field goal game, a conservative game, and that's the way this thing is headed. First half was a touchdown game. Four scores, all touchdowns. And it's 24, it was 14 all at the half. Now, in the second half, all the scoring has been field goals. So now each coach perhaps thinking at least got to get a field goal out of this to stay in a tie situation. And that's where San Francisco's Walsh is now trailing by three. Baltimore leading the Jets. And the Jets have come back in the fourth quarter. Third down and six. Montana and he just does get rid of it very close to being called for illegal grounding on that play that's what the Dolphin sidelines they were barking out let's get the penalty flag down well, but Montana there was doing a good job of play acting as Bowser was chasing him down from behind Baumhauer was the man that broke in they stunted sent the big defensive end inside and Baumhauer came all the way around but looked to me like Baumhauer not running nearly as well as he did last year. In fact, uh, although he had a good game last week, has not had the kind of season he had in 82. Montana with that painful injury, and he's not at full speed. You can see on that maneuver. Clayton back at the Miami 25. Oros end over end. Clayton at the 22. That's Walker. Just to the 31-yard line. Ron Ferrari led the charge downfield along with Bill Ring. Oro's not happy with his kicking today. And Montana, certainly uh, disconcerted by that thigh injury. It's 2017 Miami. Dolphins with the ball. Six and a half minutes left. To run it. And goes out of bounds, shy of the 35-yard line. That stops the clock. That won't bother San Francisco at all with 538 left. And it'll bring up third down and about six. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the San Francisco 49ers and the National Football League is prohibited. Five changes made in the lineup. Four changes made as they prepare for what they assume will be a passing down. Let's see if uh, Shuler will oblige them with a pass. Again, Marino. No interceptions, two touchdown throws out of the shotgun. Third and seven. Blitz. Oh, great play by Tina Turner, number 58. Joe Rose thought he'd get the ball, and three 49ers are down. When's the last time you've seen that? Three from the same team. One has gotten up now, Ferrari, but two remain down. Very often, Dick, what happens in a situation like that is the defensive players run into each other. That's Jim Stuckey, number 79, that's, that's still on the ground there. Let's watch Keena Turner breaking downfield with Joe Rose. 
Now Rose will see the opening to the outside. Keena Turner gets the turn on him and gets across just in front of the ball and flicks it away. Boy, that would have been something else. Let's go back and maybe we can see what happened to those 49ers coming inside. Lot on the blitz. Stuckey right there, and Lott was knocked right into Stuckey. Now, I think his, his feet, his heels actually hit Stuckey in the head. Ron Ferrari, 54, was the other man who was knocked down in the middle of that stack. They're all off the field now, and Stuckey, I think, caught a heel right in the head. Ferrari's looking at his hip on that play. Well, the 49ers have held with five and a half minutes left, and now, for the first time, Roby has the full field to kick to. McLemore back at the 22. Ooh, beautiful blind it. At the 21, fumble by McLemore. And Woody Bennett did a great job of containing. Now, the temptation when he fumbled is to come in quickly, but Bennett stayed outside, and it had not been for that alert play. McLemore had a lot of daylight and blockers on the far sideline. 45-yard punt. And they're separated by a field goal with five minutes and 20 seconds left. Clark with only one catch is to the right. Wilson to the left. From the 29. Screen. Craig. He's to the 38. Close to a first down. Ernest Rome, number 55, made the tackle. Well, and that's the way you use your home field. Craig knows just how far he can go and keep his feet. A couple of the defensive backs trying to get their feet and make the reaction, not able to do it as effectively as he did. Very smart play, and what a key series. 451, 450 counting down. Very important for the 49ers to get down, get some points on the board here. They'd love to get seven. Second and one with four minutes, 40 seconds left. Craig. He's at the 50. Saving touchdown tackle by Lyle Blackwood, number 42. Dick, one of the players that I'm sure the Miami coaches are watching carefully is Ernest Roan, number 55. Roan spent 17 days in the hospital, came back into the lineup last week, but is not totally healthy yet. I'm quite certain that one of the problems that he is going to have here late in the game is, is having enough energy and having enough left in that gas tank to pull him through. And A.J. Douay, the other linebacker, he returned last week after a layoff with a groin muscle pull. They both complained about running out of gas late in the game against the Rams last Sunday at the Orange Bowl. First down at the Miami 47, and Craig, he's running like a fresh horse, but not this time as Douay and Betters greeted him shy of the 45-yard line. Craig again. He's at the 40 and down at the 36. First down and this crowd starting to build in its enthusiasm. Craig using his strength and his athletic ability to put a great move on Bob Brzezinski on the outside. 49ers willing to take the close easy shot but watch the little move he puts on right there. Brzezinski reaching for those that cleat full of dirt and all he got was there. He Starting back at the San Francisco 38 has been Craig either running or catching the football. Four straight times his number has come up. Now Bill Ring, number 30, giving Craig a blow, and he's inside the 35, a gain of a yard, maybe two. Betters and Roan made the hit. Craig taking some oxygen on the sideline, and I wonder what has happened to Wendell Tyler. Maybe Tyler bruised his shoulder somewhere along the way. Of course, this young man right here, not a young man anymore. <laughs> well, he Three. Did. There's oh, Craig. Boy. First down at the 21. Well, I think they're in range now. And I started to tell uh, our audience, Dick, I talked to Worship before, well, yesterday during practice. And I asked him, I said, does it make a difference to have this stadium completely closed in? It was open at one time. He said, I wasn't here before. And I said, I've forgotten how old I was. Great play by Roger Craig. And a good call by Bill Walsh. Knew where the opening was, guessed appropriately, and Montana able to find the open man. Montana operating, and you could see him hobbling, even heading for the line, with a bruise just above the left knee. Yeah, there's so much attention to Clark going deep that Craig has been open underneath. Here's Craig again to the 19th. Fumble. Fumbles, and Miami has recovered. 
Fetters came up with a football as Craig, and that may have been a factor of his just carrying the ball so much being used so often that fatigue may have entered. Well, a young man like that is throwing himself emotionally into the game, and he really had carried the ball down the field on his own effort. Now, they just stripped the ball here. Fetters gets inside Brzezinski. I think it's Brzezinski, actually, that stripped the ball away. And it is indeed Betters who reaches out with that long arm. He and Bowser and came up with the football. But that is the biggest play so far of the ball game for the defense of the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, but Betters gets the credit, but Brzezinski forced the fumble. He just reached in and tore the ball free from six left. Franklin. And the play made again by Carlton Williamson, who's had an outstanding day forcing the run from his safety position. We'll get another chance. Franklin. Stopped at the 25-yard line. It'll be third and five. Timeout with 134 left. So it can happen. Nope, it's Franklin. And he didn't make it. He stopped at the 29-yard line. Fourth and one. And timeout called with 129 left. Let's climb inside of the 49ers thinking caps for a second. Roby had a punt, punt block just a few weeks ago uh, against the New York Jets. Turned out to be one of the big plays in that game. Let's see if they go after him here. The knock is that he is very slow to kick the ball. He's only had one block, but let's see if they decide to go after it here. 129 left. Of course, the clock in Miami. Oh, here they come inside. They, they've tried to guess with the snap. They're trying to force him to take too long here, too. Down to 10 seconds. Gets it away. Moore at his 32. Oh, Great what a play. play. That was a sensational play by Heflin, Vince Heflin, because McLemore had at least 10 or 15 more yards upfield had Heflin not made the short tackle. A 40-yard punt. San Francisco brings the offense on. The ball at the 35. They have two of their timeouts. No, they have no timeouts. That's right. They had to take the rest of them and stopping the offense there. A minute 20, that means the ball will have to be played to the sideline. Ronaldo Nehemiah is in the game. The world class hurdler is to the left. Montana. Oh, they can't afford that. He fumbles, and Miami has it again. Montana pressured by Baumhauer and Betters, and Betters comes up with a loose ball. And it's Baumhauer who shook it loose, came in behind Montana. And I've got to believe that that injury to Montana had some impact on that particular play. Montana normally would have been able to run right away from Baumhauer, but pulling away on a leg that's not working made it impossible. Baumhauer just knocked the ball loose and betters with another big, big play. So with a minute 12 left, there's no way the 49ers can stop the clock. Let's see who creates the problem for Montana. There's Baumhauer, 73, powering straight ahead. And he's able to reach in, knock it loose, and better 75 trailing the play says, I got another. It looked to me like Montana was switching the ball from right hand to left hand to tuck it away from the traffic. And right in the middle of the switch, Bob Baumhauer just reached out with that long arm and slapped it away. Man, it's only a matter of executing a couple of successful snaps now for Miami. As the Rams, you see, a final have beaten the Bears 21-14. And the combination of a Rams win, 49er loss means they're tied for first in the West. And I wonder what Bill Walsh will do now after making the changes that uh, hope to bring him a victory here at home. They're going to be uh, one and nine at home over the last two seasons. It's hard to figure. And let's not forget the New Orleans Saints. They'll share first place. Three teams in the West, 49ers, Rams, and New Orleans, will finish today at six and four. And for Miami, apparently they'll have a one-game lead over Buffalo and maybe Baltimore, depending on what happens between the Colts and the Jets. Now here comes the final play of the game. Now they're under 30. No way to stop the clock, and it's over. And of course, the uh, 49ers will be waiting for New Orleans to come to town next week. I want to thank Bob Coffey, Mel Corvin, Dennis Kennelly, Kirk Cornell for their support. Don't forget, stay tuned. First camera, Knight Rider, Princess Daisy, an outstanding lineup for you on NBC tonight. Ted Nathanson, our director, Larry Cirillo, our producer, everyone here at NBC Sports from Candlestick. Great job. Ladies and gentlemen, the Miami Dolphins have made it four in a row under Dan Marino, the brilliant young quarterback from Pittsburgh, and the Toa Upavon Shaman, which has been quiet for a while, comes through with two key field goals, and Miami has 
beaten San Francisco 20 to 17. The 49ers have won only one of their last 10 at home for Merlin Olsen, Dick Enberg, 